I'm Alexandra Kreis and you're listening to Outer Travel in a Journey. In my own search for self-understanding, I have met people from all walks of life. I bring to you a taste of these encounters. Hello and welcome back to Outer Travel in a Journey. My guest today is Elise Tan. Welcome, Elise. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming on to the show. In case you are not familiar with Elise quite yet from the, pod, from the podcast notes, Elise is a, a subconscious transformation coach and creator of her own method, which she calls the subconscious shift method. She helps mostly entrepreneurs and coaches reprogram limiting subconscious beliefs that hold them back so they can become authentically aligned with what they were born to contribute to this world. So this is a little bit of a blur to know where this conversation is going for everybody. So Elise, having to create your own method means you're coming from obviously a road traveled with its up and yes. down. Do you want to talk a little bit about how you got to develop this method? What was in the background? What kind of spiraled you to, to work with the subconsciousness? Yes, no, I'm happy to. Um, I have uh, over been on a transformational journey for about 30 years, decades. So I've been exposed to a lot of modalities and for most of my life, I suffered from extreme and severe depression and anxiety to the point where I just couldn't get out of bed. And it was due to the severe trauma that I experienced in my childhood. I was exposed to a lot of violence in the home. Yeah. And, and I ran away as a teenager and I thought that when I ran away, I would be free, you know, mm -hmm. but it's not the case. It's not, unfortunately, how trauma works. You can't run away from it. And, but I didn't know this. I was a teenager. I didn't really understand any of these things. And so I just had a really hard time as an adult uh, coping. Uh, I, you know, when you're in trauma, you're living from the survival part of your brain. So everything is either black or white. And it's, it's strictly survival. Live or, live or die. On a, on a subconscious level. So you're making decisions from that place. Mm -hmm. And when you're making decisions from that place for most of your life, you don't make very good decisions because they're all made out of a sense of fear and scarcity as opposed to possibility. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, there were many, many years in which I, I, as I mentioned before, I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't get out of bed. And on the really bad days, I'd have to uh, call my therapist to get her help yeah. to just get me to sit up in bed, you yeah. know? And then finally when, you know, my body just felt like a weight and people who suffer from severe depression really know exactly what I'm talking about. It just feels like your body is like a weight and you just can't move. I mean, brushing your teeth is like, you know, climbing Mount Everest, you know, even just getting up to brush your teeth. And um, once I got out of bed, though, I just watched TV because I just wanted the day to end. I just couldn't bear the day. And then I just watched TV, uh, you know, Seinfeld reruns. And that's how I lived most of my life, just really surviving. Mm. Um, and then one day, you know, I love, I love YouTube. And yeah. I love the going down the rabbit hole of YouTube because I love learning. You know, I yeah. just love learning new things. And I came across this woman who's a spiritual teacher. She actually has lived near me at the time, physically, which is really interesting. She's internationally renowned. Her name is Gabrielle Bernstein. Okay. And she just, you know how you, when you come across people and they just speak to your soul, yeah. They're just speaking directly to your soul. <clears throat> and I was just taken aback with her. And I, and it's a good thing that she has a lot of videos online. And I just 
completely consumed her videos and she introduced the idea of the the idea which I couldn't even come to on my own was that I have a choice with which to to perceive my life I have a choice you know and but when you're living from a certain part of your brain it's incomprehensible you, it, you can't even begin to think that way right so she started to open up my mind and my thinking and the foundation of her practice was meditation okay. and I you know, in the past was very much involved in yoga. I was a yogini. I studied Sanskrit. I did all of that. But the, but the meditation part was never something that I could do as much as I wanted to. I just felt like I just, my mind would not stop. And I, I just thought I tried it. It's not for me. And I was inspired this time to try it. Yeah. I just followed my intuition. My intuition said, yeah, I should try it. And so um, I went to, I didn't know where to go or what to do or, or anything. And I know that David Lynch, the filmmaker, David Lynch has a foundation where he teaches people uh, meditation. Yeah. TCM, right? He came. Yeah. It's from... Transcendental Meditation yeah. specifically. Yeah. 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 And they, they're an amazing organization. They do incredible work around the world with veterans and and d victims of domestic violence and really transform people's lives and so they had a friday night introductory night and i was sold and i signed up to learn to, to the meditation and i remember specifically i'll never forget when the woman was you know signing me up she said your whole life is about to change and you're going to begin to get creative again you know and I was really taken aback because she said it with such certainty and I'll never forget that moment and I was open to it and so I practiced as I was told twice a day very diligently I still do and over just a very short period of time I noticed all these changes happening and this is a beautiful thing about meditation is that it eventually it, it shifts you but in such a gentle way and one of the first things that I noticed that disappeared after a couple of months was panic attacks what was normal for me was to wake up with panic attacks every single morning with my heart pounding mm. that was normal so normal for me mm. that i didn't even know that it was it was happening and it was only after i started meditating that it stopped that i realized that that's yeah I woke that's up amazing that. and Sorry. and no, go ahead, please. Can I interrupt Ask. just briefly yes, because please. you touched upon something and we're going to go in closer to that story, how you kind of came out of trauma, which we certainly feel. Um, some of us are obviously also in trauma, but not as to an extent as you've just described. But uh, and turning to yoga, I've seen I've been like, you know, I've been doing yoga for more than 30 years myself. And I have come across the very same thing like you, you know, like when you're doing yoga, you, you combine this meditation technique more or less with the standing at the beginning, you know, or the sitting or whatever, like, you know, your style was teaching you to, we stood. And I always noticed that that is so ingrained for me that whenever I was trying to do meditation in a different form, it would not really sit with me. And I'm just wondering, have you come across the reason why you feel you kind of you know you can do the meditation with when you're you're stuck to a new technique or why does does that not happen for some people in yoga that just came up for me <laughs> Which we could yes explore. well that's a really good point and that's a really good question and i found with transcendental meditation you're assigned a mantra and so what you do is you focus on the mantra. And I felt that when I was focusing on the mantra, it cut out all the noise. Yeah, yeah. Right? And so you're in, in transcendental meditation, you're assigned a mantra, right? But you can do something as simple as a Sanskrit term like sat nam. You mm. can just say sat nam. Mm. Um, 
you you don't necessarily have to be trained in transcendental meditation you can just take on any kind of mantra and use that and that's what i found worked for me another technique you can use is staring at a candle so there's different mm. ways of meditating and i didn't really know that before yeah. and yeah. and the mantra worked for me brilliant yeah that's what i think too because the minds as you described it you know if you're in a in a pulsation of is this negative or positive for me and when you don't see opportunities or the palette of choices that life can give you then how do you get out of that mind trap because obviously what you're describing is very much mind related rather than physical related is trauma is so often relates to the mind instead of to the body i mean we do have physical trauma but we also have what we store then in the mind that's how i understand it at least a little bit yeah well the the new research shows that trauma is actually um, stored in the body i just wanted to circle back really quickly and for those who are interested the body keeps score the book is amazing and it's by dr bessel van der kolk k-o-l-k and actually if one goes to his website there's a lot of uh information on his website and, uh, and also YouTube videos. He's, he's on the cutting edge of trauma. Absolutely, yeah, I read his book, Vettel van der Volk, Kolk. Yeah, he's a, a Dutch man, I think, living in the States and yeah. he, he worked with so many PTS, um, yeah, traumatic yeah. Vet veterans. Yeah, that's what he for, did. For, yes, for over 30 years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so coming back to trauma and the brain, I was, I was it actually, and there's many scientific tests now that show that meditation physiologically changes the brain. Yeah. So it takes it from the survival, the lizard, the amygdala part, and it activates the prefrontal cortex, which okay. connects to making logical sound decisions, not from a place of fear and scarcity and survival. So it literally physiologically changes the brain. And as a consequence, I started uh, making decisions, better decisions, healthier decisions, logical, smarter, wiser decisions. And I started attracting different people into my life because like, like attracts like, right? Yes. So survival people are going to attract survival people. And so, you know, um, well, minded people are going to attract well minded people and so even the so my external environment began to change as well but the, one of the most powerful and significant things about being still is that we begin to uncover uncover the truth of who we are mm. and it happens in such a beautiful unfolding way and that's a lifelong journey right we're we're constantly unfolding and, and getting to the truth of who we are and what does that mean well the truth the truth is is that we aren't our trauma the truth is is that we're not our feelings of sadness yeah. the truth is that we're not our feelings of fear yes yeah. we are there is a part of us that is is inherently whole and complete and healed mm. And when we are still and have practices like yoga or even just being in nature, we get closer to that part of ourselves that we become so divorced from living life. Absolutely. Yeah, it's an empowering uh, moment when we, when we notice that. Um, this just brings to mind, I was just listening to music earlier on. I'm not sure whether you're familiar with the work of Michael Kivanuka. He is like a black soul singer, like modern. Mm. And he has this um, album called Love and Hate. And he really actually, this album came out before the whole, you know, Black Lives Matters movement started again, obviously. You know, this is not an old or not a totally new movement. But he brought out this album and he says, you cannot take away from me what God has given me. You know, and I'm, yeah, and I'm thinking you're describing it in some other way. You know, we are inherently whole, you know, and everything that happened to us has been 
you know, people made us buy into that or kind of beat us even into that physically or mentally. And uh, you're talking about the path of reconnecting to that. And is this where your work stems from or goes to? Um, well, yes. Well, it's, it's, my, it's my ultimately my message. When you uncover the truth of who you are, you become authentically aligned with your gifts and what your, your purpose and what you're here to do in the yeah. world. Yeah. And so what happened with me was that I began to come alive, you know, and I, I became a transformation coach because of my journey of transformation was so powerful um, and significant. And I found, so I got training as that. And I also found that I was very gifted yeah. at coaching. Mm. And so finally I found my gift after trying so hard looking on the outside, looking from the outside um, for my gift. I found um, that I was very gifted in, in coaching and just healing and helping people. And so I, through my own journey and through my own work, um, I came across the subconscious mind and I really studied the subconscious mind because I, when I started my business, I did all the right things. You know, as a coach, you have your website, you, you know, I, it was, I have an online business. I work strictly virtually yeah. so I can work with anyone in the world. And so you have your social media profiles and content and, and I had a sincere desire to serve people sincere and i knew i was really good at what i did but i just was not getting the traction yeah and it was only when i learned so the second component of my kind of my liberation if you will for lack of a better word was really understand how the subconscious mind works mm. and the thing with it is that most people don't understand but it controls 95 percent of our behavior our decisions that we make yeah. Um, and so we may have a conscious idea about wanting to do something, about wanting to serve, right? Yeah. But if on a subconscious level, we believe we're not worthy, yeah. our conscious and subconscious mind is out of alignment. And whenever you're out of alignment with your subconscious mind and your desires, you're not going to make your life work. Your, li your life yeah. is just simply not going to work. And so I found in my case... You know, I uncovered a, a story about that I had of a dog, but then I still had the identity of someone who was very depressed, right? I, that identity had to be upgraded. So even yeah. though I was healed and I was experiencing all these things on a subconscious level, I was still a depressed person. So I had to upgrade my software. Yeah. And how the, you know, a little more about how the subconscious mind uh, works is that from in utero it starts in utero what the what the fetus is, and, and is exposed to all the way up until seven years old there it, the it's it's like this this it's like this spy that's listening to everything that goes on and if something happens to you even in utero if in your external environment tests now they scientists now know that in utero the the unborn fetus picks up what the environment is inside and outside and it, it gets imprinted right so if if there's violence in the home that gets right imprinted you know, on some level yeah. the, the interesting thing also is that between the ages of you know one and seven the brain is in a theta brainwave state which means that children don't know the difference between reality and imagination their imagination is just as real as reality and the subconscious mind is very much like that which is why it's easy to reprogram because it doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality yes. right but what happens is if you're a little child and something happens to you and you take, because the children take things personally. Mm. Every, you know, the world evolves around children. It becomes an imprint with which 
uh, it prevents them from from really succeeding in life. Yeah. You know, in my case, so to give a specific, in my case, I had this dog that I loved very much. When I was eight years old, I got a dog. I was allowed to adopt this dog. It was my first dog. I loved her. And um, I would sing to her. I just had a very special bond with her. And she got sick. Mm. And so I took care of her as best as I could. I was eight years old, but she died, right? Mm. And on some level, I felt like it was my fault that she died because I didn't take good enough care of her, right? Because this is yeah. the logic of a child. Yeah. And so when I'm going out into the... So what that registered, that imprint for me was that if I were to help people, something bad was going to happen to them. That was one of my subconscious wow. stories that was preventing wow. me from being successful, right? Wow. In, in the world and in, in being in the world in the way that I wanted to be. And once I, once I healed that part of myself, then I got traction in a, in a big way. So it's something like that imprint. And I had no idea that that story was active. And pretty much everyone I work with hmm. on a deep level, they have no idea. Like the stories that we come unearth, excavate, are memories that they have completely forgotten. And then we help to reprogram those stories. So that's just an example of one thing that can happen to you as a child. It becomes a subconscious imprint. The conscious mind wants to serve and help, but because the subconscious controls 95% of the behavior and decisions, it's not going to allow that to happen because on a subconscious level, you're actually saving people's lives with that kind of eight-year-old logic, right? Yeah. So conscious always wins. Yeah. So that's why it's so important. And I've devoted my, my practice um, to the subconscious and created my own methodology that helps people remove these blocks and... And it's um, really effective and I'm really proud of it. And I'm very excited about I love creating you, programs, yeah. you know, dealing with yeah. the subconscious. I love what you're saying because A, the world is ready for, to uncover some trauma. You know, we're talking about, we're talking about this combination, what happens when something happens to you, to your body, to your mind and how you can release yourself out of it. But how then when you want to do and form a new life, you still have to go a little bit deeper. And I see that so many times myself. I was, you know, giving like, I was giving lectures to, to companies and somebody asked me, if I say, look into the mirror and say this mantra, will this come true for me? And instinctively I was saying like, no, it won't because that woman was at the time she was, you know, when I looked at her energetically, she was caught in a belief, you know, as you describe it and you bringing the words to what I found out 10 years by, you know, um, by surprise myself. And I thought, why did I say this? And that started me to, to go into that work of mindset shift, what you can do, you know, and so many people keep working and chipping away at certain things. And um, as you said before, before we came on live here, it's almost like, we are so blind to ourselves and we need a little bit the teacher first, the person who helps us to do the steps. Otherwise we're digging out methods and methods and methods and we are failing. And when we're failing, we're subscribing back into this subconscious mind mindset. You know, I'm not worthy. I can't do it. When I help people, people, <laughs> people die around me, so to speak. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's what I connect with your story there. Yeah. And yeah, method, absolutely. Obviously. Absolutely. It's, it's the reason, it's the reason why if you go to an event and you're all pumped and excited and you do things for two weeks and you fall back into old ways of being. The thing is, is that, you know, I was mentioning earlier before we uh, went live is that we all need each other to heal. We need each other to heal because we can't see our blind spots. We can't go really deep within ourselves without um, someone holding space for us. You know, mm -hmm. it's like we're meant to, to help each other heal. Yeah. You know, and I have learned that also the hard way because I've done, you know, all these things on my own, but I can only go so far. 
Mm. And, and, you know, I work with people, coaches need coaches, healers need healers, you know, it's like healers and coaches are not, we're not perfect human beings. And we are also continuing on our healing journey. It never stops. Mm -hmm. It never stops. Right. And that's the beauty of it. The constant unfolding, the unfolding of the wisdom and the strength and the knowledge, you know, it just empowers us even more. And allowing ourselves to see the value in doing that kind of investment into ourselves, you know, and investing into having somebody alongside with us instead of feeling we can get by, as you said, you know, you can, you set up your business, for example, uh, and then you, you, you get told what you have to do on social media. Do you just do this Instagram? You just do this kind of blogging and still you're not getting traction, you know, and it's right. almost like because you're buying and you're buying and you're buying, but you're not buying into yourself. And that's what right. you're offering people to first kind of invest into their selves and then to, you know, and then probably to, to come closer to an easier life of understanding how they can help and how they yes. can live their dharma, as I call it. Yeah, mm. absolutely, okay. absolutely. Uh, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Yes. So maybe a few insights for people who are interested in the method. I know you said it's like you're the coach and you're helping people to unearth things, but maybe you can just say what this method leans into. So it's not so mystical for the listener. Right. Right now. Well, I have, Hmm. I have, um, right now I have what's, what's called the subconscious shift call. And on one call, um, where the first part is where we do the work together. Mm. And then the second part is where I give the person a specific protocol because the way to reprogram the subconscious mind, you need to, uh, it's consistency, repetition, emotional imagery, but most important feeling. And so they're given a specific protocol with which they follow and then they have support. You know, I have follow-up support because I'm, I'm really, I'm obsessed with my clients getting results. It's the most important thing to me. Yes. And I just also recently developed an eight-week program that's um, very affordable. And it, it, it goes just a little deeper. And I'm working with people on a deeper level where we work on their life in a bigger way. The subconscious shift call deals specifically with one issue that you're struggling with. Primarily, I deal with um, people who are struggling with money, like money issues. And it's inevitably never about money, you know, Mm -hmm. but they come to me and with those issues. So the subconscious shift call deals with one specific issue that you're blocked with. And then the eight week program deals with your life as a whole, having clarity, getting clarity, uncovering what your subconscious values are, making sure that you're in alignment. It's called the um, Authentically Aligned Blueprint. It's an eight-week program, Authentically Aligned Blueprint, which I'm very excited about, which incorporates, of course, the foundation of the, my methodology, the subconscious shift method, and it reprograms the subconscious mind. It gives people um, more to work with. It shifts the identity. What it does is it helps to, to create the new identity, whereas the subconscious shift call helps you reprogram a specific belief that's holding you back, but the eight week program puts you in alignment and yeah. reprograms your subconscious mind so that you have a new identity that's in alignment with what you want to create in the world. Yeah, because that's very much the Dharma work, you know, as we call it in yoga and in Ayurveda, um, the Dharma work is not about it's about tweaking your life. That's what you said in the beginning, I remember, and which I kind of found so beautiful as well, because we we seem to kind of doing same work from different ends. Um, And, uh, uh, you know, it's not like you're going to hit the jackpot, you know, all the time. What I'm hearing you say is like you, you tweak yourself, you get an understanding of what's going on and you get some tools from Elise as well to, to work on your mindset. That's what I'm hearing. You know, that the subconsciousness that comes out as a mindset, as a fresh mindset. And, um, and then you, you're able to go a little while with a smooth run on tracks. And then you might kind of find, <laughs> find another station where you need to revisit and t- tweak whatever you've kind of fertilized so far. 
know, whatever. Right, right. But also, like, I, it's not just the mind. I deal a lot with the body. Most of the work that I do is, is with the body because the body holds the information. Our intuition is in our body. Our wisdom is in our body. Mm. It's not up here, right? Mm. So the thing is, is that we don't really, it's not a matter of shifting our mindset okay. as much as it's really transforming our subconscious identity. Wow. Because we can take on certain mindset shifts, like say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm going to perceive this in a different kind of way. That's a mindset shift. Okay. That's very different than uh -huh. creating a subconscious identity. And so we can't even just with switching our mindset, we can't shift our life just with reframing things. We have to go deeper and really recreate our or reprogram a new identity for ourselves that's in alignment. And I think this is also, you know, what people struggle with is that they are doing the mindset work. They are reframing things. They are taking on new perspectives, mm -hmm. but they're still struggling. They're still having the same issues mm -hmm. come up, yeah. you know? So it's not just mindset. It's a, it's a, the way that I work includes everything. It's mind, body, spirit. It's all aligned. What would be the biggest shift you've seen in somebody physically then? That would be interesting to me. You know, like when you say it's, it's really, oh, it's not only changing the mind. I think when our consciousness lives in our body, we also will see people. I, I know you're working online, but you might have seen it through whatever you could see at the time. Was there a case that you recall that was... Um, well, I think that people are happier. I think they're more plugged into their intuition. Yeah. They have a stronger sense of themselves and what they're here to do. Um, I, I wouldn't say that I could see a physical change outside of their, they may seem lighter and brighter, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, um, that's nice. Light on Friday is good already. Yeah, um, there's so so much good for for the world around us, for society. If we all could be a little bit lighter and brighter. Yeah, and as you probably know, like disease is caused by emotions that are stored in the body, trapped yeah. emotions that are stored in the body. It's that's how disease is caused. So it's an overall sense of wellness. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, Elise, for your time and for coming around. And for those who are inspired by what you do, you have a little gift for our listeners, right? I do. I have a gift and I'm so honored to give it. I, um, I have a hypnosis that I created. I'm a certified hypnotherapist. So I have a hypnosis that I created for anxiety. And it also comes with a workbook. So you can work through things and have even more clarity if you so choose. And to get that, you would go to mindpeacenow.com. Okay. We will we'll put that link underneath the show notes or into the show notes so people can pick it up from the website. And you also get Elise's website and how to contact her in case you're interested to see more of her programs. Well, again, thank you for coming around. Thank you, listener, for um, being with us today. I hope you have a beautiful day in New York, Elise. Thank you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. You're welcome. And I see you the next time at Outer Travel Inner Journey. Bye for now. <laughs>